Now we're going to talk again about uh, the four line of defense against chemical and mechanical injury. So welcome back. And I remind you that last time we talked about that the cranial bones, like here in the skull, they are protecting the, the brain against mechanical and physical injuries. We can also have bones in the, in the surrounding the spinal cord. Uh, the second one that we talk is the cranial meninges that if we talk about the uh, spinal the spinal section they can also be called spinal meninges so if you remember here we talk this is a meninges the arachnoid and I told you okay and there are these granulation and or villi and I never told you what is the function so the function is filtration yeah and they are very important because they are filtrating the this as uh, this liquid that I'm going to talk in this slide, okay? And so I, I told you cranial bone, uh, let's say also cranial meninges, and the third one that I told you is this brain blood barriers, okay? So remember the neurons and the blood don't mix. Blood is not a good environment for the neurons. And we need to prevent that pathogens or tumor cells going to the brain. So they are the capillaries of the brain are, are are sealed with tight junctions. So as we don't we have this selective barrier, we have a liquid that is our four line of defense that is called the cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, and but what is the cerebral spinal fluid here? So of course C. S and F, yeah, this is why you have CF, CSF, and you can find it here in this schematic surrounding the spinal cord, yeah, in many regions, as well as uh, the outline of the, of the brain, as well as several cavities inside of here. Okay, so if you see it is constantly circulating different sections of the brain um, but what it is the CSF or cerebral spinal fluid this is a liquid that protects the brain and the spinal cord this liquid is clear and colorless and is uh, composed mainly of water okay and so if you remember we have this brain blood barriers so we need to be exchanging nutrients and one way to exchange some of these nutrients is using this cerebral cerebrospinal fluid and this is why we have this uh, arachnoid granulation or bilay that it will help us also to filtrate the cerebral spinal fluid okay so now i don't you already know that the csf is a liquid that protects the brain against the brain and the spinal cord against injuries and there are three main functions that appear in your textbook okay so there is one function that is let's write there are mechanical protection why because the csf serve as a shock absorbing media okay the second function that you can read in your textbook yeah, is the chemical function. And the chemical function is that the CSF provide optimal chemical environment for accurate neural signaling as well the neuroglia. Yeah, so it prevent uh, mechanical injuries. It also allow the correct signaling uh, of the neurons and neuroglia. And the third one is the circulating okay let's write circulation yeah why because the csf is a median for minor exchange of nutrient and waste products again remember that because we have the, this blood brain barriers we need to find different ways to exchange uh, nutrients and waste products so for example this uh, cf uh, the Cerebrian spinal fluid carries several substances, and some of these substances 
could be oxygen, could be uh, glucose, let's put glucose, and they can be other ones. And those uh, uh, chemicals, they can be important for the neurons, or they can also be important for the neuroglia to work properly. Okay, so let's recap all the information that I told you. I told you that there is something called cerebral spinal fluid, that this is the four example of uh, uh, defense against mechanical and chemical injuries for the uh, central nervous system, both brain and spinal cord. And what it is, is a liquid that protects the brain and the spinal cord. Yeah, and the main function is protect, protect against chemical and physical injuries and if you want to know more about that in your textbook, that are, they, they talk about three, mechanical, chemical, and circulation. Also, I told you that the cerebr cerebrospinal fluid carries several uh, substances. So remember, oxygen, glucose, and there are other ones that are very important for the correct functioning of the neurons and neuroglia. Okay, so again, this, uh, there are more information in your textbook if you want to read more in detail about that. In this slide, we're going to talk about the brain ventricles. And the first thing that I want to tell you is that these ventricles are cavities within the brain that as a main function, they produce and store the cerebrospinal fluid. So the CSF that we talked in the previous slide. And if you see the figure here in the left, here I'm going to show you that there are four, so let's write four main ventricles. Yeah, so there is a system of ventricles through which the cerebral fluid go from the central canal here, all the spinal cord, and it flew and it flows around all these canals. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to start with the first one that is here in green. I'm going to color code all of them. The first one is called lateral ventricles and you have one here in the left and one here in the right, each one in, in each hemisphere. And if you want to know more here, there is a thin membrane that appear in your textbook that is called a septum pellucidum. Pellu, uh, pellucidum is transparent. Okay, here, an irony of biology appear. The person who named this one, uh, the second ventricle is called the third ventricle. So let's write a second here. Yeah, and this uh, third ventricle, I imagine because they are counting the two lateral ventricles as uh, like first one and second one because there's two. So this one will be the third one is located here. And this, this right here, this work. If you remember those machines that you can get a Coke with a coin. So this, you have to put the coin through a slit. So here, this structure look like a slit and later, when we study more in detail the sections of the brain, you will see that it's superior to the hypothalamus and also is in between the different, uh, the left and right section of the thalamus, okay? And now we are going to move into the third component, yeah? The third ventricle that is here located in blue. So, here, this one, I'm going to put a tree here, that is the cerebral aqueduct. And why uh, this cerebral aqueduct is important? Because if you see, it's located in the midbrain and is connecting the yellow third ventricle to the next ventricle that you will see here, that is the, the four ventricle. Yeah, that you see it in, uh, in red, yeah, the four ventricle 
is not anymore located uh, in the cerebrum area. So here, if you see the true previous one, the lateral ventricle, uh, third ventricle, and finally the uh, cerebral aqueduct were located mainly in the brain. This one is located posterior to the cerebellum. Yeah, and you will find here structures like the pons and the, la uh, and the medulla oblongata that we will be talking later. Uh, so uh, in addition to that, we, I told you that the uh, cerebral spinal fluid is flowing around these different ventricles. So you have, for example, here other structures. This one is called the interventricular foramen and is here in this section. Yeah, and is uh, connecting the green ventricles that are here, the lateral ventricles with the yellow ventricle. You can also find this structure here in the red ventricle or four ventricle here. And this one is connecting, yeah. There are apertures that lead to the subarachnid uh, space. If you remember, the subarachnid space is where the um, spinal fluid is located to. So here, I just show you some structures. We can even talk about more sections, but right now I just want that you remember two main points. The first main point that I want that you remember is that the brain ventricles are cavities located in the brain that as a main function they produce and store the cerebrum uh, cerebral spinal fluid and i told you the second point is that there is a ventricular system that is composed of four main ventricles here i there should be a three that are the lateral ventricles that are located in green, that there is a third ventricle here that I put in yellow. These ones are connected by this cerebral aqueduct. And finally, the last one it will be the four ventricles. Now I'm going to swipe, uh, swipe <laughs> going to, sorry, not swipe, I'm going to change the next slide and you're going to see a lateral view of the brain and we're going to try to uh, remember all these different structures again you can stop the video or you can skip and i will give you the answers so here you have the right lateral view of the brain in red you will see parts of the uh, central nervous system and in blue you will see different components of the uh, ventricular system. So if you want, you can stop the video and try to answer this. If not, I will start right away. So the first part of the brain that is found here, pretty easy, is the cerebrum. Then if you go to the second one, here the second one, you see that there are one, let's say that this is the left one, and this one is the right one. So this is the first ventricle. These are the lateral ventricle. Then uh, the third one, if you see here, uh, is pointing in this, is connecting the first ventricle with the second ventricle. So these one are called the interventricular foramen. And as I said, the second ventricle is the third ventricle. Now the fifth one here that you can see here is connecting the second ventricle with the fourth ventricle. Yeah, and so this one is the aqueduct of the midbrain. Finally, the sixth one is the is showing the four ventricle that is, uh, I already said, is the four ventricle. Here, this structure here that is in the lateral section to the subarachnic space, if you remember, is the lateral aperture. And now in eight, we are going, we are not showing anymore uh, this system of, of, of ventricles. 
here we are talking mainly about a structure of the central nervous system that is the cere cerebellum nine we go back here and this is the median aperture and 10 is the central canal now finally we have three more structures of the central nervous system so in 11 we have the pons 12 we have the medulla oblongata and here we have the spinal cord and the section that you saw in green especially sorry in green no in red of the central nervous system we'll be talking in more detail in the following slides now we are going to show you uh, show you a different view of the brain so here we are going to have not a lateral view but a transverse plane this cutting the brain using this imaginary line and let's try to review all these different regions so here if you remember this section of the brain are called the fox cerebri and this uh, area is separated the two hemisphere and is a fold of dura mater okay so this is here now let's see the second is all this structure so all this structure is called the cerebrum the third one is do you remember all these cavities that are in the two hemispheres remember the name of this so the cavities are called ventricles and these ones in particular are lateral ventricles because you have one in each of the hemispheres uh, dividing this structure you have this membrane that is transparent that is the septum pellucidum finally here you continue this division of the two hemisphere but in this case and in this case if you remember it's a it's a fall of dura mater so this is again the false cerebri and finally number six we have if you read your textbook in detail they will talk about the superior sagittal sinus and this structure is draining both vessels and the uh, cerebral spinal fluid uh, of the bilateral cerebral hemispheres and if there's a problem in this structure there will be an increase in the pressure of the brain so now of course we only have done one structure and you know what it is because it's the name of this slide the choroid plexus and here i show you an schematic of the choroid plexus here this is a, a, a section uh, uh, through the choroid plexus so we are taking this single place and we are making an schematic that area of the brain and here the key is that you have blood here you take this blood and you filtrate it yeah using this uh, 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 these epithelial cells and when you filtrate them you produce this CSF that we know that is the cerebral spinal fluid so in the next slide I'm going to go over all this uh, process and I'm going to show you the different elements of the choroid plexus but I wanted to give you the big picture of what is happening in the brain and where is located the choroid plexus before discussing all the different names that you find here I'm going to tell you what is the choroid plexus and the choroid plexus is a complex network of capillary so here you see that this is a capillary and here I'm, we're only showing you one yeah so in the previous slide you saw those structures yeah that they were like rough and but instead of being smooth all of those were networks of capillaries and they are lined by specialized cells so in addition to capillary they have these ependymal cells good and and what is the function of this uh, choroid plexus but why you have capillaries and you have ependymal cells because the blood as the blood it doesn't mix with the neurons so you need to have this way to filtrate the blood and produce the cerebral spinal fluid yeah so 
the, uh, the main function. Yeah, there are many functions, but the one that I want that you remember today is that the choroid plexus produce the majority of the cerebral spinal fluid. And how we do it? Because you remember that uh, this structure is located in the ventricles. Yeah, uh, so all the ventricles are there and they will have this choroid plexus and they will have all these capillaries and they will be filtrating all the blood to create and to fill all these ventricles with a CSF. And how they do it? They do it, so remember the CSF is important. Remember that we have blood capillaries, that this is a, a complex network of capillaries. And key here also that there are ependymal cells. And those ependymal cells are in charge of lining the ventricles of the brain and they select the substance of the blood plasma and they filter it and then they secrete the cerebral spinal fluid okay so here you can see that the ependymal cells are ciliated cells yeah and you can see also the tight junctions so you see here here that are sealing each one of the structures and this allowed them to be able to filter and that the cell the blood it never goes into the ventricles to conclude this section we're going to finish this topic of the cerebral spinal fluid trying to understand how it flows in the brain so in the textbook you can find this diagram with all the names Right now, I'm not going to tell you a lot about the names. I want that you understand first a big picture. So let's start with two interesting facts that every day you are, uh, there is a production of CFF and is between six to 700 milliliters per day. And it is replaced around four times a day. In other words, you need to produce CFF every day and you need to reabsorb it every day. So I'm going to change the color and here I'm going to show you how it originates. So last time we talked that surrounding the ventricles, you have these epidermal cells and you have the choroid complex and you see these purple arrows that will sh that are indicating that here you see that the, uh, the CFF is produced and it starts flowing to the different ventricles. And I, I remind you, that is not produced only in the lateral ventricles, but is produced in different ventricles. So here you can see another one here, and you see the purple arrows, how it goes from one region into another one. Okay, so this is the production. Now let me change colors to blue color. And here you can see uh, in the blue lines, you will see how it's reabsorbed. So in these blue areas, yeah, here, for example, you see all these blue arrows represent how uh, the CFF is gradually reabsorbed into the blood through, and if you remember, let me put maybe another color, this structure here, the arachnoid granulations that are finger-like extensions of arachnoid matter uh, that are in charge of again filtrating now the CFF and remove these um, waste products and that they will go back into the blood through the jugular veins okay so just to remind you I told you a few ideas so the first idea is that both the, the production and the reabsorption of the CFF is very important and happen every day and there is a flow in the brain so now i'm going to start putting arrows so i told you put a lot of purple arrows showing you the how the flow from the choroid complex through different ventricles i also show you in blue that and there is also need to be reabsorbed and there is a flow also of the ben uh, of the uh, different veins yeah and it is in particular if you remember 
all these projections that are called arachnid, uh, arachnoid granulations or arachnoid villi are in charge of this process. Uh, there, and there are also other structures, but those one uh, I wanted to highlight it there. Uh, so remember, I told you that every date there is a production of CSF. I also told you that it is replaced around four times. And I told you that there is a production of CFF that occur in the choroid complex that are, are these uh, complex of capillaries and the reabsorption occur gradually through different places. In particular here, these arachnoid granulations are very important. And if you remember in previous slides, we talked about these superior sagittal sinuses. There are many uh, sinuses, but this one in particular is important and is the one that you can see here is the vein. Yeah, and here you see the exterior, the external one, the one here in the outer section of the brain, it will be the superior sag sagittal sinuses. Okay, so now there is a lot of information. Now I'm going to show you an array schematic of the textbook that hopefully it will help you to understand this in a much clearer way. So uh, in your textbook, they also have this very pretty diagram that I hope that it even uh, help you to understand this in more detail. And um, again, this is the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid. And here to start, we're going to start with the artery, arterial blood. So it comes from the heart and the lungs, and it will start going to the different ventricles. So it goes from the four ventricle that is here, yeah, the, then it start getting uh, more uh, in the different structures uh, far uh, inside of the brain, such as the third ventricle and the lateral ventricles. Okay, so all these arteries are going through all these different structures, as is, as is shown here, crossing all these different sections of the brain. Then, what is going to happen is that in each one of those sections, they will be these choroid complex uh, choroid plexus and these choroid plexus are going to be filtrating the blood yeah and they are going to get they are going to filtrate it to produce the and let me put it on purple here the cerebral spinal fluid so in each one of those they will be doing that and now well in the beginning we have arterial blood flowing going into the brain now we have the cerebral spinal fluid that it will go from the lateral uh, ventricles yeah to the third ventricle and then to the fourth ventricle okay so i explained this top region now let's see what happened here below in this area okay so we already talked about this part. If you see, I move the arrows in the opposite direction because now the CSF is moving in the opposite direction. And here we're going to finish the cycle by focusing on, on this region that is below. And here what happened is that, as we said before, the arachnoid granulations of the dural venous sinuses are going to be filtrating the, the CSF and they are going to remove the waste material and put it into the venous blood. Okay, and then every again, all the process is going to start again and the blood is going to be, uh, is going to go to the heart and then it's going to go to the arteries and this is happening constantly. Yeah. All this process is going again and again every day. And remember, the CSF is replaced four times a day. 